How do you even start a video talking about Queen Elizabeth II? There's just so much to cover. The woman herself, her legacy, what she represents, what she meant to me, to my family, to Canada, to the people of the Commonwealth, and to the rest of the world. For those of you who aren't aware, uh, Queen Elizabeth II died today at the age of 96 after a 70-year-long reign, making her the second longest reigning monarch of a sovereign state of whose reign can be attested, appropriately enough only being eclipsed by Louis XIV. And I'll say up front, when I heard about her death today, I cried. I cried and I, I've kind of been down for the rest of the day. Um, just in sorrow about her death. And my parents told me that they did likewise. And I think you can say a lot of things about the monarchy and about Elizabeth II. I don't think anyone can doubt that she was a good person and that she was sincere in her faith. And I certainly hope that despite being Anglican, she died in friendship with Christ and even now is with him in heaven. The fact that there is the um, rainbows that I think it was over Buckingham Palace and where she died hopefully is an indication that she received God's favor in her last moments. And I would ask you all to pray for her. So maybe taking a step back and just talking about what my experience is with the Queen and why it's, it's so tragic and so sad to me that she passed on. My father's side of my family is English and Scottish. My father, my grandfather's people immigrated to Canada, I believe it was during the 1910s or the 1920s, just after World War I. And my grandmother's people were Scotch-English who lived in uh, America prior to the Revolutionary War and fled that country as loyalists in the aftermath. My grandfather's family has lived in England since at least the time of the Norman Conquest, having come across with William the Conqueror, and I have no idea how long my grandmother's family lived in Scotland prior to the moving here. My grandfather, who was probably growing up the person that I was the closest to, in many ways even more so than my parents, was extremely proud of his heritage. Uh, he was fiercely loyal to the Queen, to Britain, to the British Empire, to the principles that it, that it was built upon. He was someone who had volunteered during World War II. Uh, he didn't quite make it as he was too young at the time. But he had volunteered during World War II. Um, he was a lifelong conservative, somewhat prominent in the party, although towards the end of his life he became rather depressed. Um, if any of you have been to Markham in, um, in the greater Toronto area, uh, he lived there for like the last 30 years of his life. And I think you can understand why he was getting depressed by it. Uh, just as he grew up, the Canada that he believed in, the Canada that he had grown up with, rapidly was fading away. I remember back when I was in Scouts, we would always begin uh, each session by pledging our allegiance to the Queen. There is a certain degree of dignity and respect allocated to the monarch, even back in uh, grade school in the 90s. There's always been a certain sacredness, not just to the office of Queen or King of England, but to the specific person of Queen Elizabeth II. Because for most of us, she had been the Queen for the entirety of our lives, at least the entirety of our adult lives. In Canada, it's extremely rare to find currency that doesn't bear her picture. Um, anything from before then is to a certain extent considered something of a collector's item. I remember when I was young and I'd see the uh, occasional penny that had her father's picture on it, I would be completely shocked by it. I'm like, who's this guy? Why isn't Elizabeth's face on this? She's been queen forever. And I think that's the attitude just a lot of us had. That no matter how much things changed demographically, culturally, the more the former Commonwealth just kind of fell into civilizational ruin. So long as she was there as a, a shining symbol of unity of what the empire used to be, of what Britain used to be, there was still some degree of hope. There was still something to cling on to. And I think the monarchy is really the last institution of traditional Canada of the Canada that was the most loyal subject of the British Empire, 
of the country that was founded by the merging of English and Scottish uh, people on one hand and French Canadians on the other. A country that was proudly Christian and celebrated the fact that it was part of an empire in which the sun never set. I think one of the great tragedies in history is there is a proposal for something called the Imperial Federation, which was going to try to unite the various settler colonies of the British Empire into something like a federal state. I think the original goal was to unite Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Britain, and maybe a couple other different places into a, I think it's called a real union. And it would have been nice if at least Canada and uh, the United Kingdom had stayed and united to a certain degree. It really brings to mind a, a line Jefferson was going to put in the original Declaration of Independence, we could have been a great free people together. And I think ultimately, whether you're American or Australian or anybody from an Anglo-descended, English-speaking person, she wasn't at least in some way your queen. And I know a lot of people in these circles hate the English, they hate the British Empire, they hate what it represents, that it brought about liberalism and multiculturalism and all these other things. But it's a bit like French people and Napoleon. Even if you're the most diehard, legitimist, traditional Catholic, if you have any heart, you have to feel some affection for Napoleon. Because it was when France was at its greatest. It was when Napoleon walked, the world shook and cowered before the might of France. And as an Anglo, even if there was a lot of problems with the British Empire, and I have some issues with some stuff it did, it was when my people were greatest. It was when they were respected and feared throughout the world, when they achieved immense economic, cultural, artistic, technological advancements. I mean, there's a reason that the later half of the 19th century is called the Victorian Age. When we talk about modern Canada, there's a certain pride in the fact that we really don't have a definitive culture. That there is no culture, there is no traditions really, there's no de facto religion, there's none of these things. It's, it's kind of touted as being like the ideal new society, that we don't have any of these things, that it's just this kind of bland mixture of neoliberal globalism run through a blender. And really the last aspects of anything resembling a, a traditional Canadian culture are tied up with the monarchy. They're tied up with the particular parliamentary traditions, the fact that we still have governors and lieutenant governors and a Senate and a Privy Council, and we call it the Royal Canadian Air Force, and we still have stuff named after the monarch and that we have her picture on all our money. And like I said, I think for a long time, other than kind of English culture and um various types of Christianity, that was what held Canada together and a lot of different Anglo countries together, that we were all subjects of the Queen. She ruled all over us and over us all, and we were all um loyal to her. I think with very multicultural societies, often what you need to kind of bind them together is either a religion, a common religion, or a common monarch, or both. I think you need something more than just vague civic nationalism in order to make a successful society with so many different parts. But that's just kind of me. So I think that's what she meant to a lot of us. Um, also, just we've been through so many corrupt politicians, so many people who have done such immense damage to our society, to our culture, to our civilization. But she's always just kind of been there as this woman who just cares about her family, cares about her faith, and cares about her country. And to a certain extent, it's, it's almost reinforced by the fact that all her power is delegated and taken away. And she can't really do anything because we can't really say she's responsible for anything that happened in the, the post-war era. Um, and I've been seeing that a lot on Twitter in particular. So there's there's a bunch of different reactions to this. You have the left-wing people who are saying, gotcha, this is revenge for colonialism because dying at the age of 96 surrounded by your family 
after a 70 year long reign in a castle that's a real gotcha moment that's a real like dying alone in the streets and i saw these disgusting people say like elizabeth personally ordered the deaths of tens of millions of people and it's like she didn't have any power how is that even possible even if i accept like their insane their premises and their the historical revisionism I, I don't even get how that's possible that she was involved with it and i don't get how it's an l like i said to die at the age of 96 surrounded by your family in a castle but maybe i'm just not big brained enough with it for it so i've seen that from left-wing people but anytime someone vaguely associated with Christianity or monarchy or whatever dies, they immediately just shit on them and do the most crude, profane stuff uh, possible. The other group I've been seeing is American conservatives, who, uh, as much as I love Americans, on issues like this, they really irritate me. Like, I saw like some of them complaining, Nancy Pelosi ordered the flags to be put at half-mast in the Capitol. And they're like, we decided that 300 years ago that we weren't going to bow to no Anglin mar monarch. And I'm just like, okay, A, it's just basic respect. She's the most senior head of state in the world. Um, B, England and the United Kingdom has been a, an American ally for, like, at least since World War One. And they've been, there's, there's very close cultural ties, economic ties, technological ties. It's probably America's actual closest ally is the United Kingdom. Or you can even order Canada, and, or, or uh, include Canada in that. And the idea that it's like some sort of betrayal of the revolution and it's wrong for them to lower the flag because the head of state of America's closest ally died, I think just shows it. It's this founding myth of America, and I get that it serves a purpose, but the whole, like, England bad, the monarchy's evil, George III was the worst person, like, to ever rule over America, and this is a country that's had Lyndon B. Johnson and Woodrow Wilson and stuff like that. And then I also see just a lot of people saying, oh, she was a pedo, her family were pedos. I get that, like, Prince Andrew and some other members of the royal family were involved with Epstein and some really shady shit. But I've never heard any real accusations that Elizabeth herself was involved with any of that. If anything, if you watch The Crown or, like, any documentary I've ever seen, is she's just kind of like the the rock in the center of the storm that whatever craziness happened, she's kind of, she kind of stood above it. And so to see all the people just kind of shitting on her and being like, we settled this during the revolutionary war. I'm sorry for using that accent. It's kind of appropriate. It, it just kind of irritates me. I just think it is really insensitive and in really poor taste. And then you get kind of like the far right people and the people who are trying to be edgy and cool and they're like, oh, well, she it's her fault that everything happened in the United Kingdom that happened after World War II. The destruction of the British Empire was her fault. The just complete pausing of our culture. All the, the major social and cultural problems that occurred since the end of World War II are somehow Elizabeth II's fault. Did she have any power? No. Do I think she agreed with most of them? No, I doubt she agreed with the vast majority of them. But And I, I think this is stupid, but her role requires her to be politically neutral, which once again, I don't agree with. But the reality of the situation is her role requires her to be politically neutral. She has no power even if she wasn't being politically neutral. And if she tried to exercise her power, she'd probably either be removed from office or the monarchy would be abolished. Now, people can argue, and I think it's a legitimate argument, that the whole thing is just a farce at this point in time, and it's better to just go out in a blaze of glory and just basically tell the like um, the left or whoever to fuck themselves and to try to do something and use those vestigial powers 
and if the monarchy gets abolished, then let us make such an end to be worthy of remembrance. There's an argument for that. But let's not pretend that Elizabeth could have launched some sort of like royalist coup like the Shah of Iran did and turned back the clock to like pre George the Third and restore the monarchy to the power that it had under uh her namesake's rule. I mean, that's just not gonna happen. That's just not reality. And if you want to say that it was cowardly of her for not just doing that and saying, I'm going to try to do the right thing, even if it means the end of the British monarchy, I think in some ways that's legitimate. But I think Elizabeth would have said, it's more important that I stand there as a symbol of stability amidst all of this than to just kind of bring everything down to try to prove a point. Like I said, I think both points of view are perfectly valid. That's just kind of how I feel. And it does, like, I don't know if I'd say it bothers me, but I do think it's in really bad taste when all, like, the people are trying to be edgy or like, it's all her fault. She could have stopped this. Um, it's It's like, I think it's just people trying to be, like, cool, like I said, by being iconoclastic for taking this like dignified big time public figure and just kind of shitting on her to show how like edgy they are and how counterculture they are it's kind of an interesting example of horseshoe theory because so you have people like on the far right who are doing this to be edgy and iconoclastic and then you have people on the far left who are doing this to be edgy and iconoclastic i don't know maybe that's unfair about me I saw this cringy meme. I've been complaining about this for a while, and I'm going to keep complaining about this. I'm tired of these fucking Joe Biden memes that Biden is like a secret agent of the Pope and that he's doing like all this stuff behind the scenes, like that he overturned Roe v. Wade and there's like all this other stuff that he did. And it's just, I don't think it's ironic personally. I think it's, people who just hate Protestants so much that the fact that Joe Biden is theoretically Catholic, they're willing to just throw in their lot with him or they want to support him because they're mad at Trump and they want to go with the dark Brandon memes or something. I just think people are going to meme themselves into being Biden bros and to ride in with Biden. But yeah, that's how I feel about the situation. So I think the last great symbol of English unity is dead. Um, I wish Charles all the best. He will be my king, just as she was my queen. Whereas Jon Snow would say, she's my queen. But, um, I don't envy his task, and I don't envy whatever future the British monarchy might have. Um, if it'll even have one. Who even knows at this point in time? Just, she will always remain in my heart as the last symbol of England's golden age, of the last symbol of the empire, of the last symbol of the, the people that I descended from before everything just went completely to shit. So, that's my opinion. God bless you all. God save the king. Please play that Elizabeth has found peace with God in heaven. Amen.